<laughs> oh no, that was creepy. Hello, Doug. Hi. Hi. <laughs> you nice and relaxed? You okay? I'm okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah good. Could've, I would have liked a cup of tea for hospitality. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to disappoint. Yeah, 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 I'm sorry. I would have liked some biscuits myself, <laughs> not going to lie. <laughs> okay, so uh, is it all right with you if I start with the questions? Sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. So these are about financial kind of... Um, I guess a financial topic yeah. and then there's some added questions at the bottom um, okay. okay so the first question I have for you is is how has the cost of living crisis affected you personally uh, cost of living crisis as we as we now call it as if it's a new thing I mean I, I feel like I've lived in it all my life but now really genuinely worrying whether to put the heating on or not is is a state of affairs that I think is really dismal I've never felt like that before like mm. actually worrying about putting the heating on I'm not quite at heat or eat level but you know I've always been a fan of a warm house you know I like to keep it at like 20 22 sort of yeah. shorts and t-shirts type climate yeah. and I definitely <laughs> don't do that anymore I've, I've really have had to just adjust to like keeping the house colder not heat you know turn everything off when we go out so mm. i guess that's the most tangible example of it yeah so I've, I've i've had that as well just kind of deciding what you use and what you don't yeah yeah you just worry about everything don't mm, you yeah um the next question uh, how has it affected people in your life so like friends family things like that well, my darling daughter was telling me yesterday, uh, my granddaughter's nine, my daughter's mm. 31, so I'm a couple of generations down the line in that respect, but Olivia, my granddaughter, wanted an, another apple, oh. and her mum, my daughter, was saying, she was trying to put her off, and I was like, what's happening, are we rationing apples now? And she went, well, yeah because they're oh. a pound each I'm like, what pound. do you mean she went, they're about a pound each I'm I like, know that. how has that happened yeah the hell? Oh God. and so then so then a child who's asking for more fruit is you know she's having to think about it because it's too expensive to give her another I'm not sh obviously she hasn't got bargain apples there but mm. even so like a pound an apple how have we got to that? It's just ridiculous. It's like with sweets and chocolate and things like that. It's just like gotten smaller in size or higher in prices. But I think when you, you know, obviously you, you're meant to give kids fruit and veg, aren't you? Yeah, and if, you, if you, you know, editing it because you think it's, you can't afford it, that, I think that's a weird thing to, be, to grow up worrying about everything like that. Yeah. You know, yeah, so that's an example. Mm. And uh, how do you feel the cost of living crisis has affected the UK as a country uh, on the whole? I think um, my personal experience of the last few years has just been an endless shitstorm of worry. So mm. we had bloody Brexit nonsense for ages, yeah. like what? Then we <laughs> had COVID, which is just like, oh, right, well, what whatever that you know and then yeah. then we've got a war with russia and then just in case you feel like you've relaxed from all of those things no now we've got a cost of living crisis which is as far as i can tell caused by the last conservative lot just yeah. going like a bull in a china shop so but either way the end result is you just end up worrying all the time but it's just never ending and I, I yeah. bet it'll be something else in six months we'll oh, be talking yeah. about something else it's like mm. why are we being kept in a state of fear all the time I don't think it's too big a conspiracy theory to say I think we are being kept in a state of fear all the time well, yeah of course so you know viva la revolution mm. okay 
and uh, compared to the economy when you were younger I know you kind of touched on this but uh, how do you feel it's changed as now or do you feel like it's changed at all? Yeah it's completely changed I mean obviously I'm old so uh, you know I was brought up in the 70s and mm. 80s where you know if you did a degree which you got a full grant for and then you were a, like a start a nurse or a start a copper or any any job like that within a few years you'd be buying a start a house you know that was the deal then if you if you work hard you would get a little house and then you get yeah. a car and then you'd have your life and then you'd have a nice life and then you could retire it at the end and you'd mm. be able to go on holiday once or twice a year and buy your mates beers in the pub and it all felt like well that's fair enough yeah but that isn't the case anymore so mm what's the deal now you work really hard you know you've got nurses going to food banks that's just everything's gone wrong i, yeah. I really just genuinely think it almost feels like we need to like restart the whole system mm. so yeah it's very different i don't yeah. envy your position as young people mm. well um as a young person i do think it's kind of scary to kind of look at um adults worrying and housing going up and it, mm. it's a scary place to be but I do th think obviously that um, actually being there is completely different you mm. know um, and uh, so have you ever sh uh, struggled financially in your life and can you describe what that was like for you I feel like I've always struggled financially in my life. I've always felt like my life was about to collapse and I never had enough money and I've always just been scraping it to the end of the month. I've literally always felt like that. But mm. recently, I mean, I, I moved back up from Brighton, bought a little house next door to my daughter's house mm. and uh, a year and a half of COVID shut down and I ended up having to sell that house just to throw a lot of money in a big hole. So yeah, bought a house. I literally thought I was going to spend the rest of my life in it, and I had to sell it four years later because I just needed yeah. to sort everything out. So sorry. Yeah. Sorry that happened. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit of a drag, it's but a shame. at least um, at least I had the opportunity to do that and throw the money in the hole because it would have been worse if I hadn't had that. Mm, that's true. Mm, yeah. But yeah, you got to do whatever you need to do to survive, don't you? Mm, that's true. Thank you for sharing that. Um and have you seen others in your family or uh, friends struggle financially and how was that for you i think uh, i think the worry just becomes constant i know i know people who've got money who still worry about it in the same way as people who haven't got money worry about it it feels yeah. like it's like a collective field that is just impossible to escape from even having money doesn't stop you worrying about money yeah like it's, it's you can't escape it well, I, I don't know anybody yeah. who's got enough money who just says yeah I'm, I'm good with everything I'm weathering the storm mm. I don't know anybody in that position yeah it's the fear of being like of struggling isn't it it's the fear of not mm. having enough yeah well it's called subsistence level isn't it if you've mm. got food clothes and shelter and you're warm then you've got your basics covered but yeah I don't think people feel like that is covered anymore. It's mm. it's scary. Yeah. And then you you know I, every time I walk from Leeds station to here and I walk past at least ten people on the street, I just think we shouldn't have people living on the street in our country. I think yeah. that's really the worst thing about our society. It's just so sad. Mm. But it does make me appreciate what I've got. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, have you ever, uh, yeah, the next question was, have you ever been financially stable? And if you have any, or any tips that you would have to becoming financially secure? Well, I've got an algorithm and the algorithm mm. is that your outgoings need to be less than your incomings. Mm. Yeah. And that doesn't matter how many zeros you've got on the end of it. If your outgoings are more than you've got coming in, you can have a problem. Mm. So, for me personally, I'm not really very materialistic. I'm not looking to earn a lot more money. Yeah. I'm looking to spend less money. Mm. So that's my top tip: is 
it's very it's so easy to float around like even just here like you buy a coffee mm. you go to yeah. the you know you get some food and you know you, you realize you've, you've gone and you spent 10 15 quid yeah. and then if you do that five days a week it's quite a lot of money isn't it yeah and then can you be bothered to bring your own tupperware food or you know most people can't mm. i can't but you know yeah it's like it's hard to keep to i think you know like that daily routine of of like not buying and like you know you think oh i'm gonna treat myself i'm gonna buy my food or like something like that mm. and for me personally i tried to bring like pack lunches every day and i just uh, you know there's the cafeteria and i was mm. like well why and the cafeteria is cheap so i thought well yeah you know yeah well, same here yeah yeah <laughs> it's that kind of common ground in that um and are you do you think you're financially stable now or what's your situation kind of look like <laughs> uh, no i'm person. not financially stable now oh. i mean i'm an agency temp here and that finishes at the end of may and then mm. uh, after that i am planning to sell my, my other house that I've been sharing with my daughter and go travelling. Oh, fair enough, yeah. Uh, but I won't be walking away with a fortune from that house. I'll be stashing it and hoping that the house prices go down. And if I go travelling for two years and then I come back and invest in a little one-bedroom flat mm. that I can buy outright, that'll probably see me out. So I wouldn't call that stable, but it's something. It's a plan, it isn't is. it? Yeah. It's, all, it's the only plan I've got. Well, like, so travelling travelling is good yeah. you know you see the wide range see what else world. is going on in the world yeah. see what the world has to offer yeah exactly mm. and uh do you think there's like hope for our generation to become financially secure or does it seem quite bleak no, it's, it is bleak mm. uh, but i think you've got i think you've got to hang on to some kind of hope and if there's any advantage of being old like I am, it's recognising that nothing stays the same for that long. Mm. Everything does change. Everything is just a chapter and quite often things come round in loops. So it won't stay like this forever. Mm. You know, who knows if Labour get in, maybe that'll change things a bit. But um, that's, that is the hope, really, that yeah. Labour get in. Yeah, Otherwise, it's moved to Scotland. Scotland's looking pretty good, not going to really lie. <laughs> yes. It really is, yeah. Free university. <laughs> oh, I didn't know it's that. free education. Oh. Well, that's the weird thing is you hear the arguments for, like, student, you know, fees and everything. It's like, well, how come Scotland's got free education? Yeah, and they seem to be doing fine. Yeah, 24-hour so. o- o- licensing for bars, free education. They're a different country to us in loads of ways. Yeah. Colder, but better. <laughs> I'll move. Um, so, uh, do you have any, I guess, mm, life tips for people of my age? Um, I think friendships are the things that really see you through things. You know, like mm. if you've got a couple of mates, I honestly think you can have a better time with a good mate with a warm can of cider sat in the middle of a car park than you can in the best place in the world with somebody that you don't like. Yeah. So I think that's my thing, is like notice who your friends are and cherish them because that's what sees you through everything. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's really a nice fluffy that's thing really to end sweet. on. Yeah. Let's end on a fluffy one, eh? Oh, no, we've got, we've got more. Oh, right. We've got You're more. <laughs> uh, yeah, oh, it gets bleak. Sorry, <laughs> sorry about this. Um, are you happy as of now? And if not, what has affected you to feel that way? A bit personal, if you don't mind. Um, well, I'll give you the short version to that. I mean, this is my 26th year of teaching, and I think it's got harder to be a teacher in this country, in this system. Mm. So I kind of feel like this, you're, you're my final run, really. This is it. It's time mm. to do something else after this. No. <laughs> Don't know. That's somebody else's job now. It's no. up to you lot to do all that. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> what? Okay, sorry. Um, yeah. 
okay thank you for sharing that that yes thank you very much um and uh a little bit of a weird question but have you ever cheated on exams ever i haven't um no i don't think i'd know how to it's not really oh. in my nature um really? no Oh, not because of a moral principle, though. I just didn't yeah. know how to do it. If oh. I had done, I might have done. Oh, bless. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a little peak, you know. You have you got any top cheating tips? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. We'll, we'll yeah. do that after the interview. Yeah, then. after the interview, I'll catch yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> um, and what, do, uh, my final question, what do you think the dangers of comparing yourself with others are? It's pointless comparing yourself to others. The only thing there's any point is comparing yourself to how you feel inside yourself. If you do something and it makes you feel good, crack on and do it some more. If you do something and it doesn't make you feel good, try and stop doing it. Never mind what anybody else is doing, it's pointless. Mm. Thank you very much. Boom. It's been very helpful. Oh, bless you. Mm. Is that the kind of shite you wanted? The kind of shite I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> and fade. Robin. Okay. Okay, right. Oh, good. that's good. Great interview. Oh, thank you.